tabernacle. They pray the tabernacle plan, and you can walk through this thing in their church. It's how big it is. God has blessed them because of their praise and their prayer. He has blessed that church. And he can bless this church if we all get together and do the same thing with no excuses because we tried it before. I'm just going to let that one out. Yeah, about two months in. I can't make it. I can't make it. I can't make it. It doesn't work that way. Praise him continually and he will bless you. He will bless you and you might have to start it if you keep his praise continually on your lips. Third church I'm going to make it to in my lifetime is in Marysville, Tennessee. First Apostolic Church of Marysville, Tennessee. Anybody know what the church's nickname is? Anybody ever seen videos of this place? They call it the Taj Mahal of Pentecost. The place is absolutely amazing. I watched a men's conference that was videoed there with Brother Chesser. I was blown away just by the videos they showed at this place. It was astronomical. I can't believe how beautiful it is. And I'm going to go there and worship. I'm going to praise. And I'm going to thank God while I'm there because he's blessed them with that great big church. And you know what else I'm going to see in my lifetime? I'm going to see our brand new facility out here where everybody gets together. church to get it started. What we need the world to know, what we need Niles, Ohio to know, what we need the Mahoney Valley to know is that there's a little bitty church on the dead end of Fifth Street up on the outskirts of Niles, Ohio. And it ain't real fancy, but there's a group of people in there, a body of believers. tracks in their arms, cocaine powder rings under their nose. Old boy can walk in, tore up, drunker than Yancey yeah. Tucker on the Baldwin Sisters recipe. I mean, tore up from the floor up. And he can, listen, and when this church gets the praise of God, It says they were those that had been through great yeah. 
tribulation. Not seven years, not the 70th week of Daniel, not Jacob's trouble. Tribulation. The word, burdens, afflictions, and troubles. That's what the word meant. So guess what, Holy Ghost filled saint of God, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ with your pearly white song, ready to go to heaven, praising and worshiping. If you're going through hell on earth, if you got a little trouble, you want to stand up on your feet, lift your hands, and shout hallelujah, because you're just being qualified for glory. They went through the trouble. They went through the tribulation. They were burned. They were beat down and busted, but yet they came through. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But if you praise him, if you worship him, he will take you through any situation. And it just makes me want to shout thinking about it. If a group of people in heaven that have been through more than I ever know. And I think I got the right to come in here and mope around. Oh, pastor. Oh, brother pastor. You don't know. Never, ever, have you had a day that bad that you can't praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him when the sun goes down. Don't roll out of your bed in the morning before you say hallelujah. I exalt you, Jesus.
they would have looked at him. He couldn't get them off the pew. He said, one day after service, this old saint lady comes walking down to him. She says, Pastor, I got to talk to you for a minute. She said, that guy, he bothers me. He said, he's too loud. He runs around too much. He said he knocked someone else's purse over and spilled all her stuff out into the aisle. Right? She said, you need to do something about this guy, Pastor. And he thought, said, he said, I got myself, oh, you're crazy, you old bat. Yeah. And he said, okay, let me look into that. He said, the very next service, here come that new palmer, marching right down the center aisle. He said, Pastor, I want to talk to you. He said, what do you want to talk about? He said, those people up in the back, he said, they never praise. They never worship. They never clap their hands. They never shout. They never sing. They never do anything. He said, you think it would help if I went up there and sat by him? And he said, I looked at him and said, I sure do. Let's try it today. <laughs> Listen, his point was, he would rather deal with that guy running around his church right. loving people's yeah. purses. Oh, let me tell you something. Real praisers don't care about your purse.
Jeroboam had 800,000 men. He sent them in a ring. Judah had 400,000. They were outnumbered two to one. And the Bible says that when Israel looked forward, they saw the enemy. And when Israel looked back, they saw the enemy. Jeroboam, the Bible says, set an ambush to pray. He was going to ambush. He was going to ambush somebody's praise. What's that mean? That's the dangerous ground. When you try to stop somebody's praise, don't you ever try to ambush somebody's praise just because you don't want to do it, just because you're comfortable and lazy and complacent. What well, you're mad at me, but if that's where you're at, don't you try to tell somebody else that they can't praise and shout and worship and you're going to glory because they're thankful for what he's done for them. Because listen, here's what happened. And I'm really coming to a fast close here, Brother Austin. Here's what happened. They were, they were trapped. They were surrounded. They were stuck in the ambush. Out number two to one. Judah did. What did Judah do how to do? The Bible said they shouted. The Bible says Judah shouted. The word there is ruah. R-U-A. Ruah. It means to shout as in breaking something. It means to shout as in splitting the ear. They shouted. And when they shouted, God struck down the enemy. Judah's praise moved God. God struck down their enemy. And when he got done, 500,000 Israeli men were 